well, this is nice. Lovely to see you again. And there's so much scheduled news in the week ahead that even America's latest jobs report on Friday the 5th of November, usually a source of market fireworks, is unlikely to grab all of the headlines this time around. That's because we've got the latest monetary policy decisions from both the US Federal Reserve and the Bank of England to which to look forward. Chair Jay Powell will pronounce from Washington on Wednesday the 3rd, and Governor Andrew Bailey from London on the 4th of November. Although we've now had 72 rate hikes and just 10 cuts from central banks around the world so far in 2021, neither the Fed nor the old lady of Threadneedle Street expected to raise interest rates this time around. Although, as inflation comes in possibly stronger for longer, financial markets are starting to price in the greater likelihood of tighter policy in 2022 from both. Several economists do, however, also think the Fed will announce the long-awaited tapering of quantitative easing this time around, while the Bank of England may get closer to taking the same step. Remember that the Monetary Policy Committee, or MPC, voted 7-2 to two to leave QE unchanged in September, the second time in a row that a member had voted to taper the amount of stimulus. The vote was 8-1 back in August for no change. Now, just by way of reminder, the headline US interest rate is 0.25%, and the Fed is currently adding to QE at a rate of $120 billion a month. The US central bank's total asset base right now is currently a record $8.6 trillion. US dollars. Meanwhile, the headline UK base rate is just 0.1%, and the Bank of England has sanctioned £895 billion of QE, including a £20 billion sterling corporate bond purchase programme. At the September meeting, two members of the MPC voted to taper that back, by the way, to 860 billion. Now that leaves investors with plenty to ponder, but there's more coming up as we have a busy slate of corporate announcements as well. There's around 10 FTSE 100 members scheduled to update its shows on current trading, and a good number of mid and small cap companies are expected to do the same. Names which may be worthy of further note include the following, although do please note as usual, some of these dates could yet be subject to change. Lock and Store on Monday the 1st of November, BP, Standard Chartered, IWG, RPS and Hiscox on the 2nd. Next, Coca-Cola, HSBC, Trainline and Smurfit Kappa on the 3rd. Sainsbury, Smith and Nephew, Hickmer Pharmaceuticals, Electro Components, Derwent London, Curries and Whiz Air on the 4th. Before British Airways owner International Consolidated Airlines will round off the week on Friday the 5th of November. But even allowing for that industrious or illustrious list, the company which could just cause the biggest fuss in the week ahead is BT. The telecom giant's due to report its first half results on Thursday the 4th of November. Now the shares are up nearly 40% over the past 12 months, although you could be tempted to argue that the good news stops there. The shares are down by two thirds from their year's peak, which was just north of 200 pence. And the shares actually trade no higher now than they did in January 1985. And that was only a couple of months after the BT stock market debut as part of the Thatcher government's privatisation programme. The latest share price slide, well, in a long list of them, comes despite a busy year of news for BT, at least so far as rumours, corporate events and strategic issues are concerned. There have been five stories which have shaped investor sentiment towards the company, and they have included... BT's declaration that it could be open to uh, its open reach operation sharing the cost of broadband fibre rollout with a partner. And that led to rumours that private equity company KKR was even thinking of buying in or acquiring the whole business of open reach. March's budget from Chancellor Sunak, which offered 130% tax relief on business investment, a break which could help open reach and BT as they strive to meet their target of 25 million fibre broadband homes by 2026. Talks to sell its pay TV sport business to Len Blavatnik's sports streaming operation DAZN, or DAZN, and the purchase of a 12.1% stake in BT by French telecoms and multinational giant Altice, the brainchild of billionaire Patrick Drahi, and then fifthly and finally, the decision to appoint Adam Crozier as chairman, replacing Jan de Plessis, who stepped down after media reports of a reported clash with Chief Executive Philip Janssen. Mr. Crozier's spells as chairman or chief executive at ITV, Whitbread and ASOS would all suggest there could be plenty of corporate activity to come, 
as he certainly never let the grass grow under his feet. Even Mr. Crozier's time at the helm of Royal Mail remains tinged with controversy even to this date. Mr. Crozier starts work at BT on the 1st of December. Now, no doubt analysts and shells will be looking for an update and a comment from boss Philip Janssen on all of those topics alongside the numbers. But the figures themselves will be important, not least because neither the full year results in May nor the first quarter results in July really went down that well, as both were weaker than expected. For the second quarter, analysts have penciled in the following for the three headline figures. Sales of £5.2 billion, that's down 2.3% year on year on a like-for-like -like basis. That makes £10.2 billion for the first half and informs a full year consensus figure of £21.1 billion, down 1.5% from a year ago on an underlying basis. Remember that analysts will be looking not just at these numbers, but also guidance for the rest of the year to March 2022. Then earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation or amortisation or EBITDA. Here the forecast is £1.85 billion for Q2. That makes £3.7 billion for the first half, flat against a year ago. And for the whole of fiscal 2022, analysts are looking for EBITDA of £7.6 billion, a fraction ahead of last year. And then thirdly, the interim dividend, well, that's actually expected to be zero. BT cancelled its final payment for fiscal 2020 and paid nothing for 2021. Mr. Janssen has, however, said that he's targeting a payment of 7.7 .7 pence a share for the year to March 2022. So presumably, analysts think all of that will come in the second half as a final payment. Or they're also carrying forecast that are slightly below that target figure for each of the next three years. Now, that may be partly due to BT's balance sheet. It ended the last fiscal year in March with net debt of £12 billion, a pension deficit of £5 billion, and lease liabilities of £5.4 billion. As a final point, keep an eye on capital spending, as BT seems to look to focus on its 5G mobile and fibre broadband services. Analysts are looking for cash spending of around £4.9 to £5 billion for each of the next three years, including the current one, up from £4.2 billion last year. Those numbers exclude non-infrastructure spend and IT spend, so the headline capex figure could actually be a little bit higher still. I hope that you and your families are all in good health and good spirits. Thank you for watching as well as listening, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.